Well, hey folks, welcome to today's Transplant Helper Quick Tip. Today's Quick Tip has to do with building better relationships in order to receive better care. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that as transplant patients, we oftentimes, and for the majority of times, we receive the highest level of care available among any people who ever have to receive medical care. However, I understand from personal experience as well as from dealing with others that when we build personal relationships with our medical providers, we're going to receive a greater level of care, hands down. And so let me tell you how you need to do that and who you need to get friendly with, if you will. You need to be on a one-on-one, name-by-name basis, for example, with your doctors, all of your doctors. And most likely, if you've had a transplant, you're in a larger facility, and so maybe you're going to a clinic. In my case, it's a heart failure slash transplant clinic, and there are many doctors who work there, many doctors who come in and out and see me on a regular basis in clinic. But I know for a fact that Dr. Talodge, Dr. Pambukin, Dr. Hoops, uh, Dr. Corderas, Dr. Um, Dr. Ochero, all of these doctors, they're going to give me the best level of care that they can because I I have a personal relationship with them. If I see them out and about anywhere else in the clinic or in the hospital or bump into them in the elevator on the staircase, they're going to stop and speak. They're going to have a conversation. They're going to ask about my family, about my, my, my situation, how I'm doing or what I'm up to, why I'm over there if it's not the day that I'm supposed to be there for clinic. You see, building personal relationships is going to make a difference. So reach out to your doctors and try to build those. It may be difficult, but try to do that. Secondarily, the second tier of that, I would say, will be to build personal relationships with your coordinators, but not just your direct coordinator. My coordinator's name is Connie, and she's awesome. She's wonderful at what she does. Uh, She always does what she says she's going to do when she says she's going to do it, and I can pick up the phone anytime and give her a call, and she gets me the prescriptions, the appointments, the the questions are answered, whatever I need, Connie's always there, And, and she knows me again, knows my entire family, knows what I'm dealing with, and I really appreciate that. However, I also understand that the other coordinators in that same clinic, Sabrina and uh, Allison and Yen, all of them I've had some relationship with and I have a, a good friendly relationship with, they know a lot about my case also. So if Connie's ever out of the office or on vacation or just can't get to the phone, I immediately asked for one of them. I said, hey, can you get me Allison or Sabrina or Yen? I know that they can as well take good care of me because I built those relationships. They they feel a personal bond with me, so they're going to take that call, and they're going to reach out and try to help. And so build relationships with your coordinators. On the next tier of that, build relationships with the nurses that are in your facility. Now, especially those that are on the floors where you might typically go if you were to be hospitalized. For me, it's a heart uh, heart uh, transplant intensive care unit. That's where I'm generally put, HTICU. And I know that if I go there, I can reach out and Kyle will be a big help or Matt or, or Rachel or Amanda or any of these nurses. They're there to help me. They're there to assist me. And again, I walk in the door. They don't have to look at a chart to see who I am. They know who I am. They, they've they dealt with me many times and they know that I'm a, a try to be at least a good patient. So they're going to give me a high level of care. Those relationships matter. Uh, Bill Build that same type of relationship, even if you're inpatient in that situation, with a custodial, um, you know, custodial crews or those those people also. They're going to give you that same level of care, and I could name many of those people also, and and what they've meant to me in the past, all the way down top to bottom, do the same. But one of these places where it's really going to make a difference and really really matter is going to really have to do with what I would, you know, be obvious to you maybe, but build a relationship relationship in your pharmacy. Uh, with your pharmacist, with the technicians, because you need it to be where they know you by name, they know you by face, and when you pick up the phone to call in that prescription, they know this matters. They know this is Jim Merle. His prescription is a, in, in that case, whether they know it by medication or not. This this is probably going to be a transplant medication. It's going to be important. He needs it. He needs it now. And they'll go ahead and, and bump that up or fill that and, and get that for you. Likewise, you pull up to that drive through you walk into that pharmacy, you need them to know you, you need them to kind of, you hate to admit it, but give you some priority or at least put some concern into what you have. 
all of these areas and so many more. I'll assure you, building personal relationships is going to make all the difference in the world. This has been my quick tip of the day. If it's been any help to you, how about like, subscribe, or share these things. And until next time, stay stronger, friends.